I'm Aaron Rutten, and this is a demonstration of the Glow Brush Pack I created for Corel Painter. This brush pack is compatible with Corel Painter 2022 and later. The brushes in this pack can simulate light and other glowing effects. Glow brushes work best on a dark background, and you can paint on a single layer or you can add separate layers. If you do add separate layers, you may want to set the composite method to screen or perhaps even color dodge. This will help the glowing layers blend more naturally with the colors underneath. The first brush that I'll demonstrate is color screen. I'll paint a stroke with this brush, and you can see that I get this really interesting rainbow effect, but the pattern of colors is sort of modeled. If your pen supports pen tilt, the tilt or the bearing of your pen will allow you to angle your strokes. Just as well, you can use pen pressure to make lighter strokes that are thinner, or heavier pressure to create thicker strokes that spread out more. Basically, the harder you press, the farther these particles are going to spray out of this brush. You may also want to look in the advanced brush controls, and under media, look under color variability. I'll close some of these other panels so that we can see color variability more easily. Here you can control that rainbow pattern that you see inside the stroke. If I want there to be fewer colors, then I just reduce the H value, and I can get something more analogous. You can always reset this brush to reset it to its default. And if I want to change that pattern within the stroke, then I can play with smoothness. Now I get something where the lines alternate colors, or I can increase the smoothness, and I can make more of an overall gradient. The next brush is Discharge. Many of these glow brushes work best if you start with a darker color because they're going to build up to a lighter color as you overlap the strokes. So I'll start with this dark purple. If it's too dark, then you can of course make it brighter, but you don't want it to be too bright because then it will build up to white, which may ruin the effect. I'll go somewhere in between here. And you can see I get these really interesting jellyfish-like effects. Or I can create lightning bolts and things like that if I do slower strokes. Or I could select more of a lightning color like this. And maybe this could be electricity going from one place to another. You can, of course, make your brush larger or smaller to get larger or smaller features. But it can be difficult to get the right size brush because particle brushes don't always respond to the brush size as well as the other brushes do. So for instance, I can make my brush really large like this, but it doesn't mean that my particles are going to look anything like I expect. In fact, they look a lot different. Try something not quite as large, and I still get this electricity effect. But again, I may want to make my color darker. These particle brushes are great because you can get a lot of looks out of them depending on how you use them. Next, let's look at ElectroWeb. I'll select a dark yellow. If I use light pressure, then I'm going to get these thin wispy lines that are tangled up, kind of like a web. And if I start to use heavier pressure, then those lines get thicker. You'll notice that the particles move around a bit on their own, which gives me that really interesting pattern. I can make a stroke with light to heavy pressure, and you can see I can get something like this. And if I build up the strokes, they will get gradually lighter and lighter. If you want them to go to white, then you may have to push it a bit more saturated like this, and you'll see it really starts to get bright where it overlaps. Let's take a look at Ether. This is another brush that moves around a lot on its own. So I can make a continuous stroke like this, and you can see that the particles dance around. This brush works well for creating overlapping strokes and just creating unique gestures. That'll give you unique shapes like that. Lighter pressure is going to give you thinner features. Heavier pressure will give you thicker, more opaque features. Each stroke you make is going to look different than the last. And again, if you want it to build up to white, you can have it do that. Or if you don't want it to build up to white, just change your color accordingly. One more interesting thing about this brush is if I do little circle shapes like this, then I can create some really interesting patterns. I can now change to zigzags. Now I get another pattern. Or I could do kind of a star shape like this. Or I could do a spiral. And you see you get some really interesting random results. Now let's try a fuse pen. I'm going to select kind of a fiery color like this. A fuse pen kind of looks like a fuse burning. That's why I gave it that name. I can build up these strokes like this. There's these little glowing speckles. If I want those speckles to be larger, I can make my brush larger. I can make speckles like this that glow. Let's try ghostly brush. I'm going to select a grayish color like this. And if I do a nice, long, smooth, slow stroke, I get something that looks very ghostly. So if you're trying to paint a haunted house and you wanted some interesting wispy shapes, this could be hair from a ghost, or maybe short strokes could be feathers or fur on a beast or arms with long claws. There's really a lot you can do with this brush. Let's try Glow Fractal. Try dark green here. Now when I paint with this brush, I'm going to build up a fractal pattern. And if I use lighter pressure, I'm going to get a different kind of almost inverted pattern. It looks a little bit sharper. 
If I use heavier pressure, then I'm going to build up that glow and make it stronger. So I can kind of fade that out like this. And if I want to change that pattern, all I have to do is go to the properties bar and look under shape. And here I can change my flow map to something else. Let's say high contrast clouds. Now I'm going to get a completely different pattern when I use light pressure or heavier pressure. Let's try another one. Let's say hatch. And as you can see, I can build up that pattern. Next is glowing gas. As its name implies, you get this stroke that looks like gas that's glowing. If I want the gas to be smaller, I can make my brush smaller, but it does change the pattern a bit. So there is kind of a minimum size for this where it looks appropriate. It tends to work better if the brush is larger and the color looks better if it's darker. Here's light tunnels. If I make long sweeping strokes with this brush, you can see I get these really interesting tunnel effects, kind of rugged cylinders that are hollow. So I could make something that looks like insect legs magnified, or I could do a cave system that's mapped out, maybe even tree branches. Let's try a light weaver. All I really need to do with this brush is just tap and hold, maybe wiggle around a little bit, pick my brush up, tap and hold again, and you'll see that these particles are concentrating into this pattern, and they kind of weave together. I can change that pattern by going up to my shape properties and choosing a different flow map. Let's try clouds. If you plan to change your flow maps a lot, you can also open the flow maps panel. And here you can see I get a completely different pattern. We'll try fine dots and I get something that looks like this. Short taps are really all you need for this brush because it's throwing out a lot of particles. And if you make a really long stroke with a large brush, it's going to be very slow. Next up is Mystic Flame. Choose a greenish color like this. And Mystic Flame gives you kind of a rough texture when you use heavier pressure. And when you use lighter pressure, you get a smoother flame. So you can have that flame kind of fizzle out like this. You can create some really interesting flame effects. Here's ribbon. When I paint with ribbon, I get a ribbon-like stroke. If I use lighter pressure, that ribbon will be thinner. And if I use heavy pressure, the particles will spread out more. So the stroke will be thicker overall. So I can go between light and heavy pressure and get all sorts of interesting effects. I could even create something that looks like a mountain. Here's sparks. Let's use a nice spark color. This is another brush where all you really need to do is just tap and hold and it'll build up these sparks. So maybe something exploded and there's sparks coming out of it. Next up is splatter glow. This is another brush that you tap with. A really firm tap is going to give you bigger particles. A light tap is going to give you smaller particles. But as you can see, they kind of splatter out like this. So if you just do a few taps here and there, you'll get a really nice natural effect. And the last brush in this pack is Squiggle Glow. Squiggle Glow moves around a lot on its own. So you can do these really quick gestures with this brush and make a texture or a background. Or you could do individual strokes like this if you were going to create concept art. Maybe I'm going to make some sort of creature like this and these gestures help me see the different forms of the creature. So there you go. That was a demonstration of my Glow Brush Pack for Corel Painter. You can download these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.